Bust is often a term way too overused for top picks in the draft, but sometimes it's warranted. And a perfect example of that is Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen was drafted 10th overall just five years ago. And since, he started at only 16 games with 12 touchdowns to 21 interceptions and has been on seven different rosters. At one point, he had so much promise, but man, did he flop. Josh Rosen, by every definition, is a bust. But why did teams love him so much coming out of UCLA and what went wrong for him in the NFL? For context, we have to go all the way back. Josh Rosen has literally always been an elite athlete. He was the number one tennis player in his age group in Southern California when he was just 12 years old and was top 50 in the country. He was eventually a top 10 junior player, but right before high school, he switched to football. He ended up becoming a five star at St. John Bosco High School in Bellflower, California. Rosen was named the Los Angeles Times Player of the Year and an All-American after an incredible senior year where he threw for 3,186 yards and 29 touchdowns to four interceptions. He was the highest ranked quarterback prospect in the 2015 class and the 11th best overall. He ultimately decided to move right down the street and attend UCLA. Now, the Bruins had just lost their starter, Brett Hundley, who went on to be drafted by the Packers. So, as a true freshman, Rosen went in and won the starting job. In the season opener, he threw for 315 yards and three touchdowns to lock in a win over Virginia. They finished the year with with an 8-5 record, and Rosen had 3,669 yards, 23 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions. He was named a Freshman All-American and Pac-12 Freshman Offensive Player of the Year. A lot was expected of Rosen going into his sophomore season, but safe to say it ended up being a pretty tough year for him. He only played in six games before suffering a season-ending shoulder injury. In those games, UCLA went 3-3 three three as he threw for just under 2,000 yards, 10 touchdowns, in five interceptions. Now, his junior year had to be good if he planned on declaring for the draft after the season, and he delivered. Despite missing two games due to two separate concussions, he threw for 3,756 yards, which broke the school's single season record set in 2012 by Hundley. In the 11 games that he played in, Rosen had 26 touchdowns, and UCLA went 6-5, and five, and that was good enough for the chosen one, or chosen Rosen, to declare for the draft. The 2018 draft at the time was thought to be loaded with quarterback talent. At least we thought it was. Josh Rosen was seen as the most NFL ready quarterback by a lot of people. His game was polished and he resembled a guy like Jared Goff, a quarterback who isn't gonna blow you away, but will help your team win by playing smart and not taking too many risks. There were still some gray areas surrounding Rosen as a prospect though, mainly his troubles to stay healthy and lack of mobility, but his maturity was also a concern. During his time at UCLA, there were a few issues, including installing a hot tub in his dorm room, which actually kind of sounds awesome, I'm not going to cap. But most of his issues were really just a 20-year-old kid acting like a 20-year-old kid. On draft night, the Cardinals traded up with the Raiders to select him with the 10th overall pick. Even though some people saw it as a steal, he was still the fourth quarterback selected. Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, and Josh Allen were all taken before him. The Cardinals were coming off of a pretty mediocre 8-8 eight eight season, but unfortunately, their head coach, Bruce Arians, decided to retire. Obviously, we know now that that didn't last very long, but they replaced Arians with Steve Wilkes, who's now the defensive coordinator for the 49ers. Rosen started his rookie season as the second string behind seasoned veteran Sam Bradford, but that didn't last very long. They turned to Rosen in just week three, late in a close game against the Bears. Now, they went on to lose and dropped to 0-3, but the Cardinals still named Rosen the starter for week four. In his first career start, Rosen threw for 180 yards in one touchdown and a 20-17 loss against the Seahawks. His best game of the season came in week eight, where he led the Cardinals to an 18-15 win over the 49ers. He threw for a career-high 252 yards and had two touchdowns and a single interception. He finished the season with a 55.2 completion percentage, throwing for nearly 2,300 yards, 11 touchdowns, and 14 interceptions. In 
Rosen's 13 starts, the team went 3-10. and In total, they finished 3-13, and which led to them firing Steve Wilkes and hiring Cliff Kingsbury from Texas Tech, who, if you remember, had been Patrick Mahomes' coach during his time there. After Rosen's rookie year, the Cardinals were the worst team in the league, which meant they got the first overall pick. Going into the draft, it was clear that the Cardinals would either take Oklahoma quarterback Kyler Murray or Ohio State edge rusher Nick Bosa. Now, Murray seemed like the best option, but did they really want to give up on Rosen after just one year? I mean, a few months before the draft, Kingsbury even said that Josh is our guy. And then the Cardinals drafted Kyler and traded Rosen to the Dolphins the next day. So clearly he wasn't really their guy, and neither was I to my ex, so I feel that. In return, they got a second and fifth rounder back. The second rounder was used to draft Andy Isabella, and the fifth rounder was traded back to Miami for Kenyon Drake. Going into the 2019 season, Rosen was named the backup to Ryan Fitzpatrick. The season started out rough. Through two weeks, the Dolphins were 0-2 and were outscored 102-10. It was clear that a change needed to be made at quarterback, and Rosen was named the starter for week three. He threw for 200 yards and completed just 18 of 39 passes, and they lost 31-6 to the Cowboys. In week four, Rosen threw for 180 yards, an interception, and a touchdown, and they lost again. The next game, he started but was benched after throwing two picks. Through five weeks, Rosen had 567 yards, one touchdown, five interceptions, and was 0-3. Well, he never threw another pass that season. Then, at the 2020 draft, Miami drafted Tua Tungavailoa with the fifth overall pick. After failing to find a trade partner, because why the hell would anybody want Josh Rosen, he was waived. Three days after getting waived, the Buccaneers signed Rosen to their practice squad. A few months later, the 49ers signed signed Rosen after injuries to Jimmy Garoppolo and Nick Mullins, and he was even active for two games, but never saw the field. He then signed a one-year extension with San Francisco, but was eventually waived. One week later, the Falcons signed Rosen after XFL legend AJ McCarron suffered a torn ACL. Rosen was even named the backup after beating out undrafted rookie Felipe Franks, who, by the way, is now a tight end, actually. Rosen didn't play much. I mean, he relieved Matt Ryan here and there in a few games, and he finished the year 2 of 11 for 19 yards with two interceptions. And literally, that's the last time we've ever seen him on the field. That offseason, the Browns signed Rosen to a one-year deal. They cut him a little over a month later and then signed him to their practice squad, but he was released in October. In December, the Vikings signed him to their practice squad, and his contract ended a month later. Nothing really special happened there. Josh Rosen has no doubt had a pretty bad NFL career, but probably the funniest thing looking back is that after he went 10th overall at the draft, he went on to say that there were nine mistakes made before him, but it doesn't really seem like those were mistakes looking back. Well, Baker Mayfield did go first overall, and while his career has gone downhill, he's still a literal starter in the league. And no matter how many people call him ass, he undoubtedly has been a hell of a lot better than Rosen. Saquon Barkley went second, and he's one of the best running backs in the league. Sam Darnold went third, and I guess he's at least still in the pros. He started a bit last year for the Panthers, and now is in San Francisco, probably just as a backup. Then Denzel Ward is a solid cornerback for the Browns, and after him, Bradley Chubb is a really good defensive end for the Broncos. At six was Quentin Nelson, who at one point was literally the best guard in football, but is coming off of his worst year in the pros. I guess that guy Josh Allen has turned out to be a pretty good quarterback. Roquan Smith is one of the best off-ball linebackers in football, and finally, Mike McGlinchey has been a consistent starter and just got a big deal from the Broncos. Now, it does actually look like a pretty weak top 10 looking back, but I can can absolutely say with certainty that Josh Rosen is the worst of that group. The dude didn't amount to anything and really only got one year as a starter before the team he was drafted by gave up on him, which by the way is just insane. He is in every way a bust, but at one moment he was so good that teams thought that he could be their future, but I guess it just didn't work out that way.